thank you very much. Also an honor for me to, to be here at uh, Hello Tomorrow and uh, tell you a little about, bit about our conquest to try to uh, conquer the world of sustainable fuels. Actually, before I start, uh, I'd, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself because without that background, it's a bit hard to understand why we are we're trying to do this. Actually, seven years ago, I was working as, uh, as the gentleman said for Air France KLM. I was uh, in a safe job as a VP Innovation uh, and I stumbled on something called sustainable jet fuel. And it was basically the notion of an aircraft flying on something else than fossil fuel, which was, I can tell you in 2010, something unheard of. Um, I actually liked it so much that I jumped, uh, jumped uh, the company and uh, started my own company called Sky Energy, uh, and, uh, is, which is now the proud global market leader in sustainable jet fuel. Uh, approaching as a total industry about 1% of aviation. Uh, well, 1% is of course still we have a long way to go but uh, it's the only option uh, for the next 40 50 years aviation will have to use a liquid fuel there is no such thing as an electric aircraft or it's not gonna work so uh, and all the new planes coming into, into the market right now for the next 30 years they need a liquid fuel so we decided to make that market. Uh, initially, the first batch that we produced was about 12 times the price of fossil fuel. And only by demand aggregation, and spark production processes, and also operating in the right geographies, we were able to make that market. So uh, with that, I uh, it's also sort of uh, exemplary where we stand for as a company, because we think biofuels, Hmm, some uh, some uh, letters have been skipped for some reason, but it's a great idea if you use it for the right transport segment and if they are truly, truly sustainable. Because biofuels, you may know, not always have a great reputation, and for good reason, actually. A lot of biofuels, so-called first generation, were made from palm oil. Whole rainforests have been destructed for making it, competing with food. Well, we try to combine those two things, so... We only make fuel for aviation, shipping, and heavy ground transport because we think their biofuel is one of the best options you have to go to a low carbon world. And on the second part is we, uh, we try to make these uh, truly sustainable fuels. And what is sustainable? Very difficult discussion. You have lots of certification schemes, but in the end it comes down to trust. And if we go to uh, one of our clients like Nike or Heineken, they all want to be really, really sure that this fuel will not jeopardize their precious brand and that it's truly sustainable. And how we do that actually is by working with a number of NGOs. And those NGOs sort of certify our fuel. They say, okay, this is, we think this is sustainable. Uh, and, uh, and that sort of puts the trust with our clients. The other important part in our, in our world, in our business, is currently it only works in certain geographical regions. Uh, why? Because in these regions, low carbon fuels are being valued. Uh, incentive systems are in place to support them. Uh, and sort of the rot dots is typically where we are most active. Uh, obviously, we love Western Europe. We love probably the Nordics even more. Norway, Sweden have uh, great push for these type of fuels. California is sort of the holy grail in our world. But for instance, last week I was in Singapore, and despite that it's the biggest marine community over there, there they still have a long way to go in sort of uh, pushing this. I mean, if you talk to the EDB of Singapore and said, so sorry, your fuel is slightly more expensive than fossil fuel, who wants to have it? And uh, I, uh, I, I can't even start uh, explaining that in Norway this stuff is, is really hot and everyone wants to have it. So the geographical area is also very, very important. Now, what do we do as a company? Uh, we focus sort of on three parts of the supply chain. First of all, the feedstock, because the feedstock, just as in the fossil world, is where the price is being made and where the sustainability is being made. So sort of half of our company does nothing else than looking around for the best feedstock that is and affordable, right quality, and also sustainable. And then via seven refineries around the world, we turn it in our fuels. We have our own blends. 
and then via all kinds of logistical partners. We don't own the tank truck, we don't own terminals, and we use there typically with the regular fossil guys. Uh, and we put it to our end client all around the world. And who are our clients? Uh, well, uh, so far, uh, very much in uh, you see the two, two propositions on the road, rail and marine sites. We have a lot of uh, uh, in in, the, in in Western Europe. We are very strong in the water. Uh, uh, how should I say that? Dredging sector. Uh, lots of uh, lots of projects on the water, basically, because particularly all the government projects in, in in Western Europe. They very much need, uh, you need to have a low carbon footprint if you want to win a tender. And the other cut clients that we have are big brands like Heineken, Nespresso, uh, that sort of, uh, yeah, have a different business case for being as sustainable as possible. So what is sort of our mission and value and what we dream about? We dream about that one day we're going to be the new Shell or the new Total 2.0 we're going to be the leading green fuel company in the world. If they don't catch us, of course, because of course, at the moment, uh, it's often that we compete exactly against these same companies. They're still very much in the fossil world. They sell GTL, LNG, and try to make them that as sustainable as possible. But uh yeah uh, we of course our biggest strength is on the carbon side low carbon fuels um so in sort of as a culture of the company we are on the one hand definitely want to make change and, and make a big impact on the world but on the other hand we also want to make money and sometimes in the green world that is a dirty world word but we strongly believe you got to do both because if we don't make money it's also not going to be sustainable. And in order to do play this game, uh, a, a healthy profit is needed to sustain growth and to uh, make as much impact as possible. So then on to the marine side, because uh, basically that is uh, the key topic uh, that I wanted to come up with. So when I came out of aviation and first got into the marine space, I was a little bit shell-shocked because aviation is all about CO2. CO2 is the leading theme. Aviation is all about trying to reduce that and I must admit it's quite a big effort led by the likes of the Boeing uh, and a couple of leading airlines around the world that want to really diminish that footprint. On the marine side however, CO2 did not exist. I mean it was all about sulfur and a bit of NOx. Uh, but so far the marine, the shipping sector had escaped the debate and their key ar argument was, well, if you compare us with other transport modes, we are on average already sustainable because, you know, we, uh, if you ship containers by ship versus a truck, the average footprint is much better. But we think that is not sustainable. We think they... That is, that is an argument that uh, will not be valid anymore. I mean, we need all transport segments in the world, we need all, all sectors in the world that emit carbon to do their duty and to go to more low carbon solutions. So, and thank God that is being picked up by certain geographies. As I said to you, Norway, Netherlands is now giving strong incentives on low carbon uh, marine fuel. So this is where we came in. Um, and for that reason, uh, also we have the, the bigger uh, science reports behind us now, both from NGOs as from leading marine research institutes that project that potentially in 2030, 5% of the marine fuel mix could be marine biofuel. What are the other options? Uh, well, currently uh, we have uh, LNG. You may have heard about that in marine. If you talk currently about alternative fuels in the marine space, people think about LNG. So as a company, we're still working hard on getting into the evoked set, as it's called, that people recognize, hey, this is also an option. Uh, other parts are, uh, uh, lots of uh, companies are, are putting scrubbers on board, which are sort of system that try to limit the reductions of a ship uh, and also in the fuel side there's some uh, and there's some uh, some innovation on so-called low sulfur fuels but so far as you can see in here the carbon part 
is only addressed by biofuels. And a uh, strong point we have there is that we don't need an engine modification and all the other options need some kind of modifications. So what is then our challenge? Why is not everyone buying our stuff? Well, at the moment, uh, and I'll be honest with you, we're slightly more expensive. Not a lot, but we're slightly more expensive. And that's slightly more expensive in the shipping world is a tough thing. Uh, and this is why we continuously have to find business cases in the marine space where this slight premium can be justified. And this is why we're doing nothing else than innovating on our supply chain to become more and more competitive every day. Um, so how did we start? Because making a market that doesn't exist, for a lot of people that sounds like a, a, a doucious goal, um, and it is, but at the same time we had experience from the sustainable jet world. We knew how to do that. And what is key about making a market is you got to start with a great launching customer and organize an ecosystem around it. And what I would like to do is, I still have six minutes, I want to use three and a half minutes of that showing you a, what I think is a pretty cool video on how we did that. Please. We think that sustainable marine biofuels should be part of the future fuel mix. It's not the only option, but it should be part of uh, a set of options. The inspiration of starting with this, this product that we, as Boscalis, believe that by uh, creating a biofuel for the shipping industry based on sustainable feedstock, we can start with a new market segment that wasn't there. We can't make this market alone. Uh, and this is why we are so glad with the great support we're getting from Boscalis and Wachila. We need this launching customer. But we also need the ports to provide the right incentives. As Port of Rotterdam, we want to be a front runner in the development of the bio-based industry. Port of Rotterdam is home to a very large industrial cluster and already home to the largest renewable industrial cluster in the world. So As Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment, we are also a target-setting uh, body. So we set the standards. Well, we recently uh, bunkered uh, Willem van Oranje with the first uh, load of uh, biofuel, and that was uh, reasonably successful. We started with an, uh, a B30 blend on board of this vessel. It gives us the hope and the trust that we can scale it up to a B50 in the near future. We have a lot of experience of running on biofuel, also much more challenging biofuels. So our very short expectation is simply to prove that these fuels work. Uh, we contribute to a more sustainable uh, environment and that's one of our uh, goals in the future to establish projects in a more environmentally friendly way. This project is not only for Boscalis, it's uh, a project for uh, the maritime industry in a global way. This second generation uh, HVO, yeah, it's, it's scary but uh, according to the contracts it only has uh, advantages. They claim a 50 to 90 percent CO2 reduction. Why now? Yeah, because uh, the possibilities are there and the uh, technology is available, so why not? At Goodfields, we recognize it's very hard to make real sustainable biofuels. As a solution, we have implemented an independent sustainability committee to make sure we're always working according to the latest and most strict sustainability criteria. We can only succeed when it's truly sustainable. And we would like to have a global standard for that, such as the Roundtable of Sustainable Materials standard. And this is, of course, where we have a tremendous economic opportunity. A lot of the feedstock that's currently being burned today, as so-called green electricity, we can actually upgrade to marine biofuel. It needs to transport itself in order to make a shift in that market itself with the partners from that market. And we must also realize that in that process of doing it, it, it also has to present a business case. Some it's clear to all of us that we, the world needs more energy uh, efficient and sustainable solution. And uh, at sea, the growth has been roughly 3% per annum. And uh, we think that will continue also in the future. In the handling of cargo, uh, the, the percentage of biofuels will grow that can be scaled up enormously. And if it's, let's say, 
up to 10% of the existing fuel handlings we do right now, then you're speaking about 4 million tons uh, for the port of Amsterdam. Bio-based economy provides a tremendous opportunity for the Netherlands in terms of greenification of our mostly fossil-based economy. Our vision is to go to full-scale biorefineries to produce lignin and sugars. We think marine biofuels made from lignin are complementary to the chemicals made for the chemical industry. Of course, they want to have economic success, but the real thing is, is to move to a slightly better, more cleaner world. And this is where we are going for. So with that, you see that uh, we mobilize quite around big, it's not just a client, but we also mobilize ports, governments, engine manufacturers, NGOs, academics. Everything was needed to sort of set up and start this market in a credible way. And uh, yeah, you would be pleased to hear that two years down the line, we're actually doing really well. There's a massive growth at the moment, particularly in the areas that, that we've mentioned. And um, I uh, also would like to tell you a little bit about some of our next steps, because pretty exciting next year, so far we have been focusing on what's called marine gas oil, which is about 10% of the marine fuel mix, and which is sort of the diesel part. The 90% part of the fuel mix in shipping is actually the dirtiest fuel you've ever seen in my life. I, I was actually shocked. I came from the jet fuel side and it's, uh, it's heavy fuel oil. It is uh, sort of a liquid tarmac. You may have heard about it. It's the bottom of a, of, of a refinery uh, and it's uh, full of sulfur and it's full of other dirty stuff. It's not just the CO2 part and the, the pollution part, but it's also the health part is playing a major concern. And we, uh, if, if you want to watch a good documentary about it, uh, what's very hot at the moment is a documentary called Sea Blind, which is uh, an investigation in the cost of the world using heavy fuel oil. And we're trying to replace that. Of course, we can't replace it all by uh, uh, in a year. We can't even replace it in 10 years. But we have to start somewhere. And I'm pretty proud that we're, we're, we're replacing the first ships next year on... Uh, sustainable heavy fuel oil, 100% running on bio-based fuel. What's also cool about it, it's very competitive. It's the first fuel that we make uh, that is actually competitive with fossil fuel. And because uh, uh, that is why we love a marine engine. Uh, if you, in the jet fuel world, you have to make very, very uh, complex fuels that needs to make meet 100 parameters. And if you're just an inch of spec, you can't fly anymore. Whilst a two-stroke marine engine probably fits in this room, basically uh, to make it a bit of extreme, you can even throw raw coconuts in there and it still works. So uh, this is where we see this massive opportunity on that side as well. And last but not least, uh, that's also being addressed in, uh, for some reason it doesn't work uh, moving forward. Ah. Uh, is uh, we also launched uh, the Good Shipping uh, uh, program, whereby we have clients such as Heineken uh, that are paying slightly more to get their, their stuff support, transported sustainably ar around the world. And why that is important? Can you imagine if, if everyone would pay 10 cents more for its Nike shoes, 10 cents more, uh, that Nike shoe would come to you in a sustainable way. So also the whole supply chain whereby the container world is sort of a race to the bottom, not making any money, that also needs to be reinvented and we somehow need to get the buyers of these goods more involved, probably even more than the shipping companies themselves, to actually move to a more sustainable world. And with that, I'd like to thank you and just in time. Thank you.